What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reefing. Come back at you with another video and today I have some allergies, not sound too good, but it kind of fits with the mood of this. The whole topic is my biggest failure. So, I had an issue with not only the QT tank, but the main display. I noticed it when I was cleaning glass. Now you guys know how insane my QT process is with the dipping process and everything. So I was just as surprised as you when I saw flatworms in my tank. In my 200 gallon tank and my 20 gallon tank. It's not good. This hobby, everyone likes to show their tank and all of its glory. No one ever talks about any of like the hardships, any of the pests, any of the problems. But I feel like that's all I do on my channel. So, big problem. I only found one in the 20 gallon, and I found one in the 200 gallon. And where there's one, there's more. So I used Flatworm Exit on it, just to see if I could knock it out and not have to make a video on it, and not talk about it really. Well, my Flatworm Exit, I probably had about 200 gallons solid worth of Flatworm Exit out of the 300 gallon uh, little dropper. Killed a bunch of them. I noticed a lot more come up, but they were still about 10, 20 on the glass total, which means they're not all gone. Now, you're asking, how does this happen? How did these flatworms get in there? Well, quarantine the corals, quarantine the fish, and the only thing I can think of are the inverts that went in, the snails. So you guys know, put snails in the tank. Now with the snails, I had to do a dipping process. I didn't do a freshwater dip on the live aquarium ones that I put in. That could have been where some of the flatworms came from. I also got my LFS, which is where these guys had the flatworms. I know there were flatworms there. I got the snails from the LFS. When this tank was upstairs, I quarantined the, th the, um, the snails up there. And I did do a freshwater dip on them real quick quarantined them, checked them over, ripped off a of vermitid here and there. I don't know. That's the only thing I can, can think of where this 200 gallon got those vermitids. Because I didn't really have any of these corals, didn't have any worries with any of the flatworms previously when I put them in. I'm not really sure. I just know that with Coral RX, Coral MD, Freshwater dipping and even a flatworm freaking dip. I shouldn't have had flatworms in there. Somehow I got flatworms. I think it's the cleanup crew in this one. And I know it's the coral in this one because there's nothing in there but the coral. And there was only one in there and I kind of siphoned it out. But my plan today is <sighs> do a dip in this tank. So go through the process, flatworm exit. Now, the lesson I learned last time was use fresh carbon. I saw a guy comment on it talking about how he thought my carbon could have dried out, which is probably what happened because I did keep it out for a while. But when the carbon does dry out, you do have a tendency to release whatever the carbon like absorbed back into the water. And I think that probably like could have happened. Let's get started. Now what I'm going to do different this time is I bought a giant overpowered air pump. I'm going to drop this. There's two outlets in here. So the two outlets are going to over oxygenate the water. Not really too worried about oxygen exchange in this tank over here, but it could happen. So I'm gonna put the air pump on. I know this isn't a review on that little Tetra pump, but it's the Tetra air pump, 60 to 100 gallons, and that is pumping out a lot of air through those air stones. Now I'm oxygenating the water first, and then you can kind of tell I have some black airline tubing. Now this is what pays off to be a reef hoarder because remember I got this for um, my ATO and it didn't fit because I went with the OD instead of the ID. So yep, I have like 50 feet of this and it came in handy. So I'm gonna oxygenate this and then start dropping in the flatworm exit. Scratch out four drops for every five gallons. There are four times four because four times five is 20 and four times four is 16. So 16 drops, I'm gonna do 32 drops. Good job doing math. I'm a genius. <laughs> Not. It's hard to think when you've got allergies. I'm blaming it. It's okay. We all have excuses. 
All right, so that's enough for 40 gallons. I doubled it up just because I want to make sure I get all of it. I'm not too worried about anything in the tank dying from ammonia, but make sure I got to get it. Now, the thing with these flatworms that I noticed in, these in this tank is it's the very minimally invasive flatworm. Some people call them ghost flatworms. Some people say, oh, it's Casper the friendly flatworm. They're like those pale translucent ones. Now, can't find any of them in here right now, but if I do see some start popping up or falling off, I will start videoing it and then hopefully get this done and then do the 200 gallon tomorrow. One of the things I probably could have done better with my quarantine process would be to rip every single one of those LPS corals off those frag plugs because that would be the only way that these flatworms could get in is if they were underneath the frag where the coral meets the frag disc. That's the only way I can think that they could get in because I went to town on this. Okay, so it's been about six-ish hours, maybe six and some change of the treatment. I can't really find any of the flatworms. I really don't want to run this overnight. It says give it a sufficient time, um, monitor it for six hours, so I'm guessing about six hours would be good. My plan is to do a big water change on this, siphon it out and drain some water from my main display tank which is looking really good despite having a handful of flatworms into here. Yes, I know there are flatworms in here, but I'm gonna probably siphon it from like the top and take this much out. That way no flatworms that are mostly found on the bottom are gonna get in. That's the plan. Maybe it's stupid. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Also, like, comment, subscribe because my videos are not getting pushed out. So I don't know why that is. Give me more likes. Maybe that will happen. But time to do my water change. I really wish every water change was that easy because moving it from the main display down here took no time at all. That's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing tonight. I'm gonna wait till the morning and then put flatworm exit in and monitor it throughout the entire day and do a water change at night. Um, yeah, but now I gotta make up more water because all my jugs are gone. It is now 7 a.m. the next day and I'm about to dose the big tank. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, right there on the glass. That is one flatworm. It's hard to tell on the rocks, but there's a flatworm right there. <sighs> Time to do this entire bottle that should be about 260 gallons worth in this 200 gallon tank. As the kids would say, YOLO. All right, so if you can tell that little guy right there is a flatworm and there might be one or two in here the rest look like little microfauna copepods but those are the flatworms i'm going around i'm kind of scraping i'm trying to get them off and float them in the water hopefully they'll you know die maybe they're just hanging on by a thread but just going around where all the flatworms could be as I wait to do my water change, my son has messed with the hose and he is now taking apart the turkey baster and put the turkey baster end at the end of the hose. I have no idea what he's doing, but he seems to really like the jugs. No comment. <laughs> he's getting so mad because the turkey baster end does not stay on. So when it's on like that, it falls off and he gets really, really mad. Give it a second. Here we go. Yep. Sometimes I feel like that dude, you know, just screaming. It's okay. You'll get it on there eventually. All right, guys. It has now been 24 hours since I did a water change. I, I had a... Uh, the flatworm exit in the tank for about mm, 10 to 11 hours and then I did a water change last night filled it up and now I'm just inspecting it for flatworms and I don't really see any flatworms anywhere on the sand bed on the glass yes I do need to clean the back but overall I'm not really noticing any flatworms now I'm not naive enough to believe that 
I have 100% gotten all the flatworms out with flatworm exit. Most likely, I've beaten them back to almost nothing. Not really sure. I'm gonna bet, well, as a betting man, I'd say there might be a handful left. Just cause I'm skeptical. Now, what I'm going to do to combat this in the future and make sure that I stay flatworm negative where I'm not gonna have flatworms or not even have a hint of a flatworm showing up is that I've done some research. I'm thinking a yellow chorus wrasse is in my future. Now I don't have any wrasses in the tank. I've looked up uh, different types of dragonettes and they said this spotted dragonette will definitely eat flatworms. Now, I do have a green mandarin uh, in QT that's gonna come out. Hopefully if I can ever get this thing to eat frozen food, geez. But um, that's gonna be coming to the tank in the next two-ish weeks. And then I'm gonna go and talk to the LFS, say, hey, order me a yellow chorus rasp, put that in quarantine, and get him in the tank in a month after quarantine. So my long-term plan is to put my mandarin in, get a yellow chorus rasp in, and then probably around that BRS Black Friday sale, I've seen, um, there's like those KZ products with the Coral Booster and the Flatworm Stop. Um, those are mostly for acro eating flatworms, but they do have um, really good benefits to the coral in your tank. So what I'm thinking is I will get that and then I will, uh, you know, boost my coral's health. And then if it does happen to, you know, have some additional side effects of knocking these flatworms back anymore, if they're still in here, then that would just be great for me. So, gotta air out the dirty laundry, gotta show my failures. Even after all my quarantine, I still had flatworms, but this is a natural way, well, using a chemical and a natural way to combat it. So guys, that's all I got for you this time. My voice is shot. Hopefully next time you see me or hear from me, I will have a better voice because my allergies are killing me in Tennessee. But give me a like, give me a subscribe, give me a comment. What would you have done differently if you were in here? Um, I know my quarantining wasn't perfect, but better than nothing, right? So I will see you guys next time.